Last season, the Golden State Warriors traded James Wiseman. Trace Jackson Davis with his first career double-double, 13 points, 10 rebounds. He had four block shots. Talk about playing for Mike Woodson at Indiana University. Um, just basically the style of offense that we ran, defensive coverage is all translated over. Well, you were doing everything the Warriors needed, blocking shots, running the floor, finishing around the rim. That move where you throw it off the glass and you dunk it, that was crazy. And so far, they have not lost out on that trade. When asked who he modeled his game after, TJD had this to say. Who do you model your game after? Um, I model my game after um, Draymond, Demonte Sabonis. He's a left-handed big that can pass. In return, they received Gary Payton II. And GP2 just took it from him. Payton just took it away. Making it happen for the Warriors. Ingram, oh, and his pocket picked, and Poole throws it down. Carl Anthony Towns, good deep position there. GP2 with a block. Made room for TJD, and so far, the franchise has every reason to be psyched about this late second round pick. Hey, what's happening, everyone? This is Swish Culture. At the time of this video, Trace Jackson Davis has played six games for the Warriors. Now, I know some of you may have seen news of his assignment to the G League. There's no cause for concern, as this is something the Warriors typically do with their young players. This is a part of the developmental process where they maximize their reps and help them stay ready for when they get called up off the bench. So this is the first update video for TJD since Jay Billis called him a lottery pick, and despite it being so early, there's certainly enough data to promote an early evaluation on his potential with the team. What I will cover is how TJD himself has been used and how he's impacted the team so far with his play. Before that, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Switch Culture for the most analytical and entertaining NBA content. So without further delay, let's get to it. One of the biggest question marks for the Warriors this season, and frankly the past 4-5 to five seasons, has been the center position. While critics have repeatedly cited a need for a 7-foot rim protector, the franchise seems to think otherwise. When pressed, Mike Dunleavy Jr. expressed confidence in the current lineup despite not having anyone over 6'9 to provide any vertical spacing. With one remaining spot on the roster, the hope is that the team will eventually sign a veteran big man to give the team some confidence on the defensive end going into the playoffs. While the Warriors are certainly capable of taking on teams with traditional big men, skilled bigs are another issue altogether, and today's most talented teams are led by some of the league's most talented players 6'10 or taller. While we can ponder whether or not Golden State will sign such a player to the open spot, the fact is that the team might well go through the entire season without signing anyone else. One of the reasons for this is TJD. The other is that the Warriors obviously plan on keeping Kevon Looney long term. Looney, who's now a top 100 player in the league, will have a spot on this team as long as he wants it, and any additional big man will either take TJD's minutes or not get much playing time behind him. At the moment, Jackson Davis is averaging 9 minutes per game, and the way he's playing seems like he should be playing more. Take for instance his game in the G League. TJD suited up for the Santa Cruz Warriors against the Stockton Kings. Santa Cruz came up with the win after a 12-0 start led by TJD to blitz the Kings into a timeout before their first basket. Jackson Davis literally smashed the Kings with 28 points and 12 rebounds in 31 minutes. He led both teams in scoring and in rebounding and was 11 of 13 from the field with a net rating of plus 15. With Jackson Davis, the team had a defensive rating of 101.4 and an offensive rating of 123.2. He was clearly the single most impactful player on either team and on both ends of the floor. So he's clearly well above G League talent. What about his minutes on the floor with Golden State? Well, for one, he's clearly in a much different role playing off the bench as he's not nearly the main scorer. Two, plays aren't exactly drawn up for him. And finally, what he's allowed to do on the floor is rather limited, not to mention the all-around increase in talent both on the Warriors and opposing teams. That said, 28-12 and 12 in 31 minutes is not in the cards anytime soon, but let's see what we've been getting and go from there. TJD currently owns averages of 4 points, 3 rebounds, and 0.3 assists in 9 minutes on the floor. It's really tough to gauge with such little minutes played, but a 29-year-old JaVale McGee had identical stats when he played for the Warriors in 2018. Let's take this a little further and look at his per 36 stats. He's 17-10-3. Those numbers are just okay for a backup center on the offensive end, but we have to consider that we're comparing him to a seasoned JaVale McGee who at this point had 11 years experience in the league. 
At no point in McGee's career did he ever average over 12 points per game, even when he was getting 28 minutes a night in his third year as a 23-year-old with the Washington Wizards. Back then, the first round 18th overall pick McGee was putting up 10 points per. Trace also currently has a true shooting percentage of 61.4%, which puts him ahead of Zach Collins, Mason Plumlee, Clint Capella, and DeAndre Ayton, just to name a few. For the inquiring minds, Mason Plumlee led the league last year in field goal percentage. Now, while these stats look amazing, they don't tell the whole story. The first thing you notice about Trace is his maturity. He's not a rushed player, but he always seems to be in the right place. These timely cuts led to game-changing baskets for the Warriors and were key to the team's early victories against the Sacramento Kings. He also rolls to the basket with intent, and while he could improve as a finisher, doesn't easily give up on the play and takes advantage of those second-chance opportunities. As a player that knows his role on the team, he plays within the offense, as he's actively crashing the boards which leads to more offensive boards and extra possessions. TJD doesn't stay stationary on the offensive end and knows that the team isn't expecting him to work on his postgame in these matchups, so he runs the floor, clears out the paint, and then takes advantage of back cuts. This tends to catch opposing teams off guard, as they're expecting the Warriors to either attack from the perimeter or a straight line drive down the lane. Despite only being 6'9", TJD gets up easily, playing well above the rim. Despite being a smaller player than James Wiseman, he seems to actually play taller on finishing. In this possession with Steph Curry, TJD tells Curry he wants it up, but Chef doesn't see that, dumps it off low, and Jackson Davis quickly corrects for the low pass and gets the finish. Now I know some of you were hoping for a James Wiseman update, and I've been hesitant to compare the two because it's still too early for an evaluation. Wiseman has only played in a few games so far, averaging 3 points and 3 rebounds in 8 minutes and is getting a lot of DNPs. That is, the Pistons coach Monty Williams is choosing to not play him. In his game versus the Bulls, however, he did show some improvement defensively. If he can build on what he did in that game, the Pistons may retain him for their backup center or trade him later for a wing player if he can't beat Bagley for the spot off the bench. That said, we've seen TJD recently go up against Nikola Jokic in the Denver Nuggets matchup and did a commendable job guarding him considering the circumstances, better than anyone outside of Kevon Looney. Now back at the beginning of the video, TJD stated that he modeled his game after Draymond Green and DeMontis Sabonis. Sabonis because he's a big lefty that can pass, but what about Draymond? Draymond is an undersized big that's a playmaker and all-time great defender. What we can take away from this is that although we see him with the ability to score a lot, he's got some incredible passing flashes, and even in this recent matchup with the Cleveland Cavaliers, he's got that give-and-go double back with Chris Paul. CP3 hits him with the quick pass and gets it back from TJD with the touch pass. TJD follows the play and gets it back from CP3 where he proceeds to pump fake Jared Allen and gets the foul on the way up. These are slick moves for a big man and his quickness here rewarded him. Despite this being his rookie year, it is still a big growth year for TJD. Jay Billis was right about him. He's capable of providing solid minutes in a playoff series, however he'll need as many reps as possible throughout the season. Let me know your impressions of the Warriors backup center. Post your thoughts in the comments below, but before that, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on all your notifications so you don't miss any of my latest uploads. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Swish.